This is the configuration used for this presentation. Uh, you see the Pigeon Pulse Generator with a microcontroller installed. And this microcontroller produces the pulses. These pulses are directed to a power switch, an electronic power switch. And this amplifying power switch outputs its pulses into a uh, the circuit and the circuit contains an inductance and a stack of capacitors. This circuit is called an LC circuit or a tank circuit. In our case, there are two push buttons, a red one and a blue one, and these buttons enable or disable parts of the capacitor. The feedback signal from this LC circuit is fed back into the pulse generator. It is operated, it's amplified by an operational amplifier and clipping diodes to reach the levels that are able to be fed into the microcontroller. And there the microcontroller calculates the phase shift. Now we are in the PGEN 2.0 pulse generator. This application supports up to three channels. And on the right we see uh, an oscilloscope with channel 1 yellow. And channel 1 represents the pulse output of the pulse generator. And channel 2 is the phase shifted signal from the LC circuit. All AC LC circuits produce a phase shift at certain frequencies. These phase shifts are detected by the pulse generator and operated into a frequency change. In the corner right we see the electronic version of the oscilloscope. Now I'm starting the pulse output and we can see there is a frequency of 2 kilohertz and we see that the pulse output at the trigger point starts and the phase shifted signal shows a phase shift of 64 degrees. This is a phase shift. This phase shift changes depending on the frequency. And now I will show you. We can change the frequency. I'm update. I'm activating the update. And I put in 100 Hz increments. And now I reduce the pulse frequency. Now we can see at frequency decreasing, phase shift changes. Now I'm incrementing the frequency above 2000 Hz. And we can see that the phase angle between the output signal and the fed backfed signal changes. At 2500 Hertz, we are at round about 90 degrees. Now I input 2000 Hertz. And now we can see how the system works when the PLR function is activated. 
you can see that the frequency changes it's around about 2451 Hertz and we can see that the phase angle has changed to 95 degrees this uh, resonant circuit this LC circuit connected has two push buttons and a stack of capacitors and they can be activated or deactivated by pushing a button if I push the button the capacity of the L circuit changes and therefore the phase angle will change and I will show you how it works I deactivate PLL pulse calculation and now I push on a button and you see that the phase angle has changed to around about 148 degree now back to the beginning it returns to 95 degrees there's another push button with another capacitor if I'm pushing on this push button the phase angle changes to 141 degrees these are ways to change the behavior of the LC circuit now we see how the system behaves when the PLL function is activated the frequency is at 2400 60 Hertz roundabout and now I push the first button and I can see there's a huge change in frequency now the frequency reached is roundabout 981 Hertz and this frequency has been adjusted by the pulse generator observing the infed signal until the phase angle reached 90 degrees at 983 Hertz he has reached 90 degrees and now I release the push button and the system returns to its original frequency of 2450 Hz and the phase wing the phase angle is around about 90 degrees when I'm pushing the other button there's another frequency 1830 Hz and this is a phase angle of around about 90 degrees this change in frequency was not as large as the first because uh, there was a smaller capaci capacitance added and when I'm releasing the other button the system swings back into 2450 Hz what you have seen is a, a continuous pulse output and now we look how it changes when I'm creating a, a discontinuing pulse output by inducing a gating I've changed uh, the oscilloscope range to one millisecond per unit so that you can see more pulses on the screen and now I insert the gating at first I increase the repetitions to 8 we can't see it until I insert the gating and we keep in mind the frequency of 2455 Hertz and I activate the gating and I can see that there are eight pulses in a sequence followed by a gating of 1000 microseconds at the moment we are ignoring the feedback signal the blue signal I can 
I can change the the gating to 1100 Hz, 1200 Hz. That means increasing or decreasing the gating. And I can see that the pulse frequency doesn't change uh, much uh, by changing the gating. This is a real advantage of a microcontroller calculated uh, gating and PLL calculation because this calculation uh, observes each single pulse and not an average about pulses, like an analog system. And and once more I push one of the the push buttons and now we can see a frequency change a large frequency change and, and it's once more 983 Hertz like the change without gating and now I'm releasing the push button and the system returns to its original frequency of 2460 Hz. I'm pushing the other push button and the target frequency is 1840 Hz now. So we can see it makes no difference uh, whether there is a gating or whether there is no gating. I return to the situation pulls out without gating. Large frequency change to 983 Hz return and the other change is to 1830 Hz. And now we can look at the feedback signal. The feedback signal is produced by clipping diodes. And we can see that after a gating, the first feedback pulses don't represent a feedback for the original output pulses. In some configurations, the RC circuit or the tank circuit does not behave after a gating the same way as it behaves after a continuous pulse excitation. And so we can see that the first six pulses don't have uh, a valid feedback signal but some kind of signal distortion. And when I'm pushing a button and the frequency changes I can see that at certain uh, frequencies there are different distortions, but these distortions are limited to the very first pulses. Here you can see the first four pulses have a distorted feedback signal. Now I'm ending the pulse output. And now we have a little bit more complex situation. There's a pulse sequence of 8 pulses and another pulse sequence at 2000 Hz of 8 pulses. And then we have inserted a gating time of 500 microseconds. So we see 16 pulses in a row followed by a gating. Peach and Pulse Generator uh, opens uh, the possibility uh, to select the PLL observed pulse segment. Now we choose the second pulse segment, not the first. And now we can see that the first Pulses, the first eight pulses stay the same because they are not regulated by the PLL function 
and the next eight pulses uh, have changed to 2450 Hz because of the PLL regulation. It's the same frequency like before. And now I'm pushing a button and change the capacitance. And we can see the first uh, pulse group of 8 uh, stays constant and the second group of 8 pulses changes to 1824 Hz. We can see it on the scope shot. We return to the original situation and I am pushing the other button with a larger frequency change. And the PLL regulation is adjusting the frequency to the well-known frequency of 982 Hz. The first eight pulses stay at 2000 and the following eight pulses are at 982 Hz. And we return back to the original situation. Once more we can see the output signal of 2000 Hz and at the second channel we now can see the, the original feedback signal from the LC circuit. We see that this, circuit ha this uh, feedback signal has a very low voltage of around about 200 millivolts and some peaks. Around about 200 millivolts. And we can say the the, the higher quality the, uh, the the feedback signal has, the better the uh, PLL calculation and PLL regulation. And we can see at a continuous pulse output, the feedback signal has a continuous shape. It's all the same. The situation changes when I'm inserting a gating. Now you can see that after the trigger point, after the, tr after the gating, the very first pulses create a distorted feedback signal. We can say that the feedback signal has some kind of distortion. And from the uh, fourth pulse on, the feedback signal has the, the, the same, the shape, the normal shape it should have for a PLL calculation. Of course, these uh, Feedback signals change when the frequency changes because of PLL regulation. This uh, um, situation of distortion uh, can be reduced by optimizing the feedback amplification circuit. There's a reason why clipping diodes are, are used. To avoid these uh, disturbances, uh, there's an INI file where you can uh, declare some pulses as void so that the PLL calculation starts at the seventh pulse in this case. <laughs> Thank you.